Pudnell, yeah. registered yeah. nurse <laughs> at uh, Purdue Farms. Yes, and I'm Tiffany Calvert, the Family Consumer Science Extension Agent here in Hartford. And yep. I'm really excited about today's lesson, Angie. This of is kind of like my wheelhouse. This is your <laughs> world, for sure. Yes, so tell us what we're going to be learning today. So today we're going to learn how to eat well, how to build a healthy meal, and the items that are in each food group. Okay. All right, so what should we start with? So we're going to start with the non-starchy vegetables, and we want about half a plate, right? All right, so just out of the examples that we have for you um, today to look at, we have some romaine lettuce. That's a non-starchy vegetable. We have this pretty tomato. We've got some broccoli, and we've got some carrots. And there are more non-starchy vegetables, but these are just some examples. And look how colorful that is. That is very colorful. That's very, very pretty. So half of your plate should be non-starchy vegetables. So Tiffany, what if it's, I just like broccoli on there? Um, and then just have more broccoli. Okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. But variety is the key when it comes to eating healthy. Um, variety meaning di different food groups and also variety meaning different colors. I always tell people to try to encourage you to make a colorful plate because each one of the colors, whether you're talking about your fruits or your vegetables, offer different nutrients. So it's really important that you don't just eat green. Okay. But green is healthy. Green is very yes. healthy. Yes. And so then we also have um, the grains and starchy foods. Yes. So when will we incorporate those? All right. So your grains might include a tortilla shell, whole wheat bread, because we're going to prefer whole wheat over just regular white. Okay. I've got a bowl of oatmeal here. Spaghetti. Have you ever heard of spaghetti squash? Yeah. Okay, so if spaghetti is kind of like a staple in your home, I would highly encourage you to replace the spaghetti, which is a grain, with spaghetti squash, which is a really healthy, nutritious vegetable. Um, and so that, that would be a good replacement for that. And then we have some squash, which is starchy, and then we have some rice, which is a grain. We have mashed potatoes, and you want to know what I do in my home. If I ever, if you've ever eaten mashed potatoes in my home, it was not just potatoes. So a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times I will throw in some cauliflower. Good idea. Um, or I will simply boil some squash and throw it in there. And once it's mashed up, it's a slightly different color. But hey, my kids don't expect anything different. That's what their mashed potatoes are. Um, another starchy vegetable would be some green peas. We got some yams here. And once again, that's pretty colorful. Um, it's not saying that you should avoid these things. You just need less of them. So it says one quarter. So what is that if I'm looking on my okay. plate? So if on your plate, if half of it it's like an invisible line. You just want to imagine that a line comes from the top straight down to the bottom. And so half of your plate is going to be your non-starchy. I mean, just completely full of non-starchy. Half of your plate. Okay. Okay. So then a quarter of the other half, okay, or half of the other half, okay, um, is going to be your starchy or your grain. Okay. Okay. And so then that leaves us with one quarter. So, so I can do starchy or grain. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, and you All can right. do a mixture of that. Now, then it says another quarter of your plate needs to be protein foods. Okay. All right. So the last little section of your plate, this quarter right here, needs to be protein, protein foods. And so that would include, of course, chicken. I know you're real familiar with That's this right. one. Purdue chicken is the best. Yes. And then we've got some almonds. You know, think outside of the box. It doesn't have to be um, chicken, pork, beef. It can come in nuts or seeds. Yes. Um, and then eggs. That's my favorite go-to protein. Um, and then I also have an example of some almond butter here. Very good. A lot stuff. of times I have this for breakfast. You know, toast up some whole wheat bread, slab some almond butter on it, or some peanut butter with some um, local honey. 
and then mm, smash good. that with uh, a smoothie, a green smoothie, and that's like the most powerful breakfast you can get. Oh. But you know what? Most people, the biggest mistake in eating comes in this quarter of your plate because people don't understand this right here, I mean, this is pretty tiny. This is a serving, this is three ounces of meat. Wow. This is one serving. So, like one a deck of cards? Yes. Yes. So, yeah, exactly. They also say that the protein shouldn't be any wider, taller, thicker than a deck of cards. So, how do you want to imagine if you open this box up is to be able to completely stuff your protein down inside this box? Wow. That's a lot less protein than I was thinking. Yes. So, usually in one meal, we can overdo it on the protein for the day. So how do I know if I'm getting enough vegetables? All right, so the um, baseball, I almost call this a tennis ball, but you are well aware that this is a baseball. Yes. <laughs> um, so a cup of vegetables is the whole baseball. Okay. Okay, so depending on the size of an apple, you know, this is approximately one cup, mm -hmm. but now I've been to the grocery and have bought apples that are way bigger than this. Absolutely. Okay, and so that would be more than a cup. So that's when you have to be really careful with your portions. Um, and then a half a cup, of course, would be just a half of a baseball. Um, and so this half of a grapefruit, okay. you know, this is pretty big. So I would say that this is more than a cup. So okay. we're taught as children that we need so many servings of fruit and vegetables. So. How much is a serving of those? Is it a cup? Or? It's a cup. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And so this would be approximately one cup of broccoli. So that broccoli. would be like one serving of my vegetable that I need for the day. Exactly. Okay. Um, and then a little bit later on when we talk about more like tracking your food and what you're consuming, um, it's kind of difficult to get that five servings of fruits and vegetables in a day. It is. Unless you're just consciously thinking about it and really striving to get there. Um, and so that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit later on. Okay, well what about the milk? Where's the milk fit in? And the milk is generally um, up here when it comes to the my plate in your drink. And then um, just a cup of milk would be a serving. So you can see this is a relatively small glass. Um, you know, as compared to what you might have in your kitchen, <laughs> if we were to fill this completely full, that would be uh, too much dairy, too, Absolutely. too many servings Absolutely. for that meal. Absolutely. Yes. And so, um, you know, while we're talking about drinks, what are some drinks that you have in your home? Um, you, we always carry milk. Um, yes. We always have juice. I like to keep the pineapple juice because I do the smoothies. Yes. Um, my son and I love apple cider. We always try to get it natural from like Jackson's Orchard because they just put the apples oh, in no, there. Oh, it's so good. It is very good. Yes. Um, we don't ever buy pop or Kool-Aid or anything like that. Honestly, we drink a lot of water at my yes. house. What do you have in your water today? This is just frozen pineapples. I just throw this in there. Of course, my ice is melted now, but I put yeah. ice in it, then I put frozen pineapples, and then more ice, and then I fill it up with water, and then I shook it up really good, and then the ice beats that juice out of it, and it's it's still water, but it gives me a little bit of vitamin C from the pineapples, mm -hmm. and it's that flavor. And you know, those flavor packets, they're not... Yeah, they, they they're not often, good for you. Yeah, they often have added sugars and dyes and things like that in them. Yeah. So sticking with um, plain water is definitely a healthier option. Yeah. Um, and to drink lots of water. I remind my kids all the time, your body is mostly made of water. So I'll ask my seven-year-old, What's going to happen to you if you go all day today and not drink any water? Of course, the answer is, I'll get sick. <laughs> you know, because I tell him all the time, if we don't eat good, if we don't drink our water, right. then we're going to end up getting sick. Right. Um, and so this morning for my drink, I have um, decaffeinated tea, and it's a hot tea. Mm -hmm. And then, um, of course, I sweetened it with honey. And then I also added some lemon. Local honey, I would say. Local honey. And Which is better. And then um, some lemon. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I bet that's pretty good. It is, it is. And so, you know, our house is like your house. We don't bring in the Cokes because if they're sitting there, guess what? They're going to get drunk. They're going to get drunk. My kids are going to beg me for them. It's going to be a struggle. Um, and then whatever we have in the home is what we eat and what we 
drink. So I just don't, don't even bring it into my home. <laughs> That's right. So what about the fruit? I mean, how do we know what our serving size of those are? Okay. Let's talk about the fruit. Yes. So typically uh, a serving for a banana, based on the size, there are smaller and larger bananas. A half of a banana would be a serving. Uh, check out these strawberries. Now I know the strawberries in the stores right now are typically larger Way than bigger. this. Yes. And so again, we're just comparing it to the baseball. And so this would be probably a half. Okay. You know, a half of a serving. Mm -hmm. And so we've also got some yummy blackberries here. Yes. Do you do you go blackberry picking? I haven't in years. We, we love um, that. We ha I haven't in years. Check out these raspberries. Those are pretty good. My yes. daughter loves those. Yes. Um, and then grapes. And you know, a lot of the fruits in my home, if before they go bad, um, I freeze them. My kids love to eat frozen grapes. Oh yeah. And so that's you a good. Just that. They're very good. Yeah, that's a good replacement for popsicles. You know, yeah, on a hot yeah. summer day. Yeah. yeah. And a fr uh, frozen pineapple is really good too. Yes, I, I love. I like the frozen pineapple, but I use those in the smoothies. Now I have to take you. I give you all the credit for the smoothies. <laughs> I'm one of those people, we, we're constantly busy, but at the end of the day, I don't know if it's because I need that last minute, let, and I don't, I know the caffeine's going to keep me up all night, and I want ice cream. I want that creamy, that sweet, that texture. If I start with that smoothie and it has those fruits in it, yep. that fruit, of course, it's all pulverized, yep. and it's and smooth then you get that and natural creamy. natural sweet. Yes, and it's the yep. same thing, and I've not craved ice cream since I started it. Because when I crave it, then I just make me a smoothie and I'm good to go. And I've just ate nothing but a bunch of fruit. So a good ice cream replacement, whether it's for yourself or your kids, is freezing bananas. Yes. And then you just throw them in a blender. Sometimes okay. you have to add like a little bit of milk, almond milk, whatever your milk is of choice, um, to make it uh, thin enough to blend. But it's just like ice cream. It's cold. It's really good. It's creamy. It's sweet because the banana is naturally sweet. Um, and so that's a really good idea for ice cream replacement. And it's really, really good for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, so some of the challenges we might run across. I know you've heard some excuses before in the past. Yeah. I hear them all the time. So the number you, one thing I, tell, I hear whenever I tell people is um, it costs too much. It does. It does. Um, so how to overcome that challenge would be, first of all, not to let the food that you've purchased and that you've spent your money on go bad, okay? So that's um, where you can keep an eye out on your fruits before they ruin, freeze them. Um, the same thing for um, spinach and kale that I use in my smoothies. I'll have it, you know, fresh in the refrigerator for a time period for salads. Mm -hmm. um, and you can make a smoothie with fresh room temperature spinach, or you can make a smoothie with frozen spinach. Oh, and so, okay. so um, put that in the freezer before it goes bad. And then just buying things in bulk and then portioning, you know, everything out. Um, especially now, don't you use the baggies? I've seen you use the baggies. I do. I use a lot of baggies. There's no telling what I'll have in my purse if you ever see me out and about, especially if I have my kids or my husband with me. You know, it's kind of like I have three kids. Right. When I really only have two under the age of 18, figure that one out. Um, because they just get hungry like so often. And so it may be some granola in a baggie, but I also carry a lot of just mason jars, the quart size, the jelly jars, and I already have my fruit washed, cut up, prepared, and in those jars. So That's when the kids idea. are screaming in the back seat, begging for me to stop at a fast food restaurant, um, then I just pull something out of my purse. So I know you're at the ballpark a lot. We're at the ballpark quite a bit. And I, right now I have like granola bars in the car and that's a much healthier choice than yes. grabbing candy bars yes. and things. Um, or we'll do sandwiches in the pack or um, the, we'll use these. And of course I work at Purdue so we have lots of chicken and okay. we'll roast the chicken and then pre-package, um, you know, pre-roll those up and put whatever, we like spinach, the baby spinach because it doesn't have that harshness. My kids will eat it, it doesn't bother them whatsoever. Roll those up and just roll those in paper towels and. We put them in the soft pack and when we're ready to go, we just grab it and go. And then it's not, Mom, I'm, I'm starving, I need to have, you know, you don't, you feel bad because you didn't feed your kids. Yeah. <laughs> 
I know, right? So have you ever heard um, a parent say to their children, well, don't eat that, you're going to ruin your meal? Oh, yeah. I remember okay. those Well, times. if my kids had a candy bar in their hand, I might say that. Yeah. Otherwise, if my kids are snacking on something healthy, I don't care what time of day it is. Um, we could be in the truck on the way to go eat somewhere knowing that it's probably not going to be as healthy as what we would have at home. Right. And I will be handing them cuties or bananas or some trail mix or, you know, some nuts and yeah. seeds, whatever I have that's healthy while they're hungry. So, you know what? If they leave a few extra fruit fries and don't eat them, then that's, that's, a, win. that's a win. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. Um, so that whole philosophy of... Don't eat that, it'll ruin your meal. It's not yeah. really the case. A lot of people have more success eating smaller meals, you know, five small meals throughout the day versus three big ones. Right. Because right. how many times have you gone home and before you can get supper on the table, I mean, it's like you're just caving in, starving. Starving to, to death. death. Yes. And you find yourself kind of snacking as you cook. Absolutely. Um, I do that often. And so as long as you're snacking on something healthy, go for it. Absolutely. Um, I see this applesauce here, and that reminds me. Um, the unsweetened applesauce in the containers uh -huh. um, that doesn't have to be stored in the, re in the refrigerator uh -huh. is a good um, snack option. Oh, yeah. Uh, just be sure to pack your spoons. You know, my That's kids have had to do the shakedown <laughs> before because I forgot to pack their spoons. But, yeah. you know, whatever works. That's right. Yeah. Oh, and also cost, uh, make sure you're buying in season the fresh. Yes. And that will yeah. definitely decrease the price. I mean, yes. I've seen, uh, um, you know, apples go from $3 to... You know, yeah, less than a dollar a pound. Yeah, so it's in some deal. cases, it can actually cut the price in half. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and then you know the farmers market has um, definitely in season and yes. local yes. fruits and vegetables, and that um, runs from trip. May to typically October. October. Yeah. October. Yeah. October. And that's over here at the Beaver Dam Park. Yeah. Right. Yep. And I know they had some over the winter in uh, the Artist Guild. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to show everybody this um, real quick. If you, of course, if you're at the ballpark, I would suggest going ahead and sticking with the wrap. But if you're at home, and the reason why I say that is sometimes it doesn't hold all of your stuff, but you can actually use romaine lettuce in place of a wrap. And a lot of times our fish tacos that we oh, have yeah. at home, yeah. we'll use the romaine lettuce. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Another good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And so I know time is another factor. It's kind of like cost and time goes hand in hand Absolutely. when it comes to they um, overlap. meal planning. And so I wanted to show you this grocery list. And I, I keep several copies of this. And so on the left hand side, I have Sunday through Saturday. And I write the meals for dinner that my family is planning on having. So like if and you have a game on Wednesday, you know. Then you know what I do? I put game on Wednesday. And I, I'll actually write that on my meal planning schedule. So um, a lot of times for my family, because we're not yet into the ball game season, Wednesday has to be a crock pot meal because it has to be ready as soon as I walk through the door at home because we have church on Wednesday night. Yes. Um, and so I'll make sure that Wednesday is a crock pot meal. And it's sometimes, you know, when you're planning ahead, you're going to save a lot of money and time because on Tuesday after dinner, depending on what my crock pot meal is for Wednesday, I could go ahead and do a lot of my washing and chopping ahead of time. And then I can have that crock pot meal already in the crock, sitting in the refrigerator. Oh and my goodness, what a great idea. Wednesday morning is turn it on. You're preparing it Tuesday yeah. for Tuesday and Wednesday. Yep. That's a great idea. Yeah. And it saves a lot of waste. And you know, this grocery list is nothing special. I actually created my own mm -hmm. because you know the staples that you keep in your home mm -hmm. um, may be completely different than what I keep in mine. And so I created this myself. And the categories that I broke this down in is where to find different items within the grocery store. Oh, that's a good idea. To save me time. There you Have go. Have you ever made a list and then it's like you're almost done and then that one item you forgot is in the refrigerated section completely on, on the, the other, other side, side of the, the grocery store? store? Yes, absolutely. So I've broken it down into um, frozen, fresh produce, canned that's food items. Idea and just kind of mapped it out how the store is laid out. 
Very good idea. And then um, something else that sometimes I use is this. And this allows my family, because I post this on the refrigerator, to know okay. what's going on and what to expect. Um, because one of the worst questions that I get, and it just gets underneath my skin, is when I get home, it says, Hi, Mom. <laughs> How are you? How did your day go? It's what's for dinner? What's, what's for supper? I'm hungry. <laughs> Um, and so it's on there, but this is a dry erase, oh, and so when Tatum gets a hold of it and he erases it, you need to make sure, you know, if your kids either can't reach it or you have it written down somewhere else. Because <laughs> that's happened to me before. Awesome. Yes, most definitely. I love that idea, because I get, I even get phone calls at work. What are we having for supper? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, takes, walk. it takes a message to my phone before I'm even, like, off from work. You know, another problem that I have is on Thursday, somebody wants me to run by the grocery store to pick up something. You know what? The grocery store through the week is almost like a mm -mm. Yeah, because by the time you finish at the grocery store and get home, you're already too hungry. I've literally tried that before, and then we get home, and I have this idea of what I want to fix, and then I'm too tired, and I'm too hungry, and we just go out to eat. Yeah. I do the same thing. Yeah. So you've been there. You know <laughs> yes, how it is. Yes. So planning ahead is the key. I mean, you just have to plan ahead um, and know uh, what you have in your home. And that's what I like about the grocery list, you know? I like that. And meal planning, I could put all my dinners down, and then I could go back and check what do I already have in my home. So you're Great not idea. at the grocery store having to call spouse and saying, check in the cabinet, see if we have this. I've done that. Which is a How lot many gallons of milk do we have in yeah. the fridge? <laughs> yeah, a lot of wasted time when it comes to that. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of wasted time. So we hope that these ideas that we've shared with you um, will um, help you to better uh, plan your meals and to, to eat better. It's a learning experience. For it, all of us. It is, and it takes a lot of um, uh, planning ahead. That's that's the main key, and I hope that's what you got out of this. And again, I just want to say that the biggest mistakes that people make is overdoing it on the protein and drinks. You drinks. know, that's where a lot of people are drinking their sugar and their caffeine. Yep. A lot of empty calories in there. So just one step at a time. If you don't change anything this week in your house, but getting rid of sodas, then that's a step in the right direction. Absolutely. Yep. That'll improve your health. Yep. And so and both Angie and I um, can help you further with this in your journey, and we hope that we have uh, shared some ideas and some tips that you'll pick up and use in the future.